The first thing that you're going to want to do is introduce yourself to your patient. Make sure that he understands why you're there and what you're going to be administering. If they've never had the medication before, or if they have any questions about the medication or its administration, make sure you answer them openly and honestly. The next thing that you're going to want to do is gather your supplies. The first thing that you're going to need is IV fluids. The next thing that you're going to need is IV tubing. Your patient may already have a primary line in their room running, in which case you wouldn't need to gather these supplies. Next, you're going to need your medication bag. It's important to make sure that your IV fluids and your medications are compatible. The next thing that you're going to need is a secondary IV tubing set kit to hang your medication bag. Last but not least, you're going to need alcohol prep pads to clean the port, gloves to protect yourself from the medication, and labels for both your bag and IV tubing. You never know when a mistake can be made, so you want to always check your orders just to be sure. Once you've got the right medications and fluids, you're going to scan them. Checking the compatibility of your medication and your IV fluids is very important. Using a drug book is very simple and easy and it'll tell you whether or not the two solutions are compatible together. Next, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're giving the correct medication to the correct patient. Make sure you ask them their name and their date of birth, which you can check against their medical record or their bracelet. Then you're gonna scan the ID bracelet. We cannot stress the importance of good hygiene. Always wash your hands. It's also really important to wear gloves for yourself because you never know what medications can be absorbed through the skin. And now you're ready to begin. Make sure your IV tubing is closed and clamped. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is remove the caps from both the spike on the IV tubing and the cap from the bag. Make sure that you keep both of these sterile. Next, you're going to spike the bag. You can do this by hanging the bag up and spiking from underneath, or you can take this approach and spike with the bag upside down. Either way works just fine. Next, the easiest thing to do is to hang the bag up. That way, you have both hands to work with the tubing. Once the bag is hung, you're ready to prime the line. You're going to do this by filling the drip chamber, opening up the clamps, and running the fluid through the line, making sure to invert the ports, getting all of the bubbles, or as many as possible, out. Next, you're going to want to fill the drip chamber about halfway with fluid. Then you're ready to open up the clamps. This allows the fluid from the bag to run through the line. Make sure to get out as many air bubbles as possible. Once the fluid starts running, it's important to invert all of the ports. This allows the air bubbles to escape. You want as little air bubbles in the line as possible. Programming the pump is very simple. It gives you step-by-step -step directions. You're gonna choose your unit first. If you have to put in a caregiver ID number, it'll be your instructors or your nurses. If this pump hasn't been used for your patient before, you'll have to put in patient information. Then, you're going to select your infusion type. In this scenario, we're just using standard IV fluids of normal saline. Next, you're going to enter your rate, your volume to be infused, and the time as ordered. Then, you're going to load the cassette into the pump. It's very simple, but you're going to have the buttons on the cassette facing away from you in the machine when loading. When you open up the secondary set of IV tubing, you're going to find a blue hook to hang the first bag lower. Then, you're going to take the secondary IV tubing and you're going to spike the medication bag. Now, you can either prime the line the same way that we did the first by just running the fluids through, or you can use a technique called back priming. Back priming is beneficial because this way you don't lose any of the medication while you're priming the line. Before you can back prime, you're going to connect the two lines together. To do this, you're going to take an alcohol swab first to thoroughly clean the port right above the cassette on the primary line. 
Once it's thoroughly cleaned, you can connect the secondary line to the primary line. Back priming is very simple and actually pretty cool. First, you're gonna lower the piggyback below the level of the primary bag of IV fluids and the pump. Then you're going to unclamp the secondary line and watch as the fluids from the first bag back up into the secondary tubing. Now you're ready to program the pump. Select piggyback from the menu. Then, select the correct medication to be infused. Now you're gonna enter your rate, volume, and time as ordered. It'll remind you to hang the piggyback higher and to open the clamp. Then you're ready to go. Just click Start Infusion. If your patient hasn't had this medication before, make sure you monitor them for any adverse reactions.